I get to watch this uh, whole Twitch thing and see how different it is. I really don't like the dashboard, but I already updated it. I suppose I can minimize the stream information. Can't make the window bigger, can you? You can make it full screen, just not larger. No fairness. I think the little video preview window that it gives me is probably still larger than this 19-inch uh, TV set that I had back in the 90s. Watched all the Star Trek on that thing. And it's like, looking back at it now, it's like, how did you ever see <laughs> off of that? Alright, so that looks like it's going so far so good. I see Cyndaquil. I'm just going to go... Yo, and it should pop up there. There we go. So that means we're live. Hello, everyone. It is Monday, December 12, 2016. I'm Dent. That's Cyndaquil. Dent's in more nervous all fields. I'm in Sandy. But not for much longer. We're still playing Final Fantasy XI online. All right. A couple things. Tonight, they were... Well, last night, they were supposed to do the uh, version update. And, um... I guess somebody spilled coffee on the servers and they went down. <laughs> so they rescheduled everything and uh, on December 12, 2016, that's today, from 2030 to 2300 PST, that's, uh, what, 1030 my time, and December 13th in Greenwich Mean Time, we will be performing maintenance on all worlds. Reschedule the update. During the maintenance, Final Fantasy XI will be unavailable. It's always during gain XP. Maybe that's why they tried to do it last night, so they wouldn't be during gain XP. Please be aware that once maintenance begins, you will be automatically logged out of the server. See the information section for more details. Due to the Play Online login technical difficulties we experienced on December 11, 2016, the server maintenance for the version update has been rescheduled to December 12, 2016. We apologize for the inconvenience, and here's our first pop-up message letting us know that, uh, they're going to turn the servers off. But it's okay. The campaigns have already started. We have a... Uh, <clears throat> I already forgot what it was called. A Unity Wanted campaign going. And you can also get a Gobbybox key for the Wanted Dial, which will cost you zero. You can only get it once per day, but if you have like 50,000 characters, like David and I do, get a lot of keys. Just log them out next to this guy. All right, so we're gonna see what Syndical gets. The Doma weapons coffer. And I don't have it up in front of me. I want to say I also remember reading that the random uh, button gives you a higher chance of getting items. I don't know what a Dondrobus is. It kind of sounds like a gun. It is a gun. It's a 117 Ranger Corsair, Marksmanship Skill 215. Okay, uh, <laughs> not the worst thing in the world, I suppose, but not the best either. Let us, where did the coffer go? Just gonna look, I got too much junk on me right now. I always have too much junk on me. I don't hear the music either. I did get the, yeah, you know, Domo Weapons coffer. We'll try it again. Usually, a, Towards the bottom under items. Warp ring. There it is. I just couldn't see it. Now we got a little bit. Junk. Oh well. Um, actually, it's not complete junk. You can uh, sell it to an NPC for 1k or collect 50 of them and use it to upgrade something that he drops or do what I do store it on a meal. So, before I do anything else, I was listening to other music. That's probably what happened. Yeah, I turned the music all the way down. It's the Sandy merch. But we're not going to stay in Sandy. No, we're going to make up a song and then we're going to make a little money. Before they turn the servers off, at least. Um, Edelin Isles of Work, Western Edelin, home point number, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. So, the NPCs out by the uh, expedition places, expedition places, they can't, uh, not Signet, what's it called, Ionis? They can't put that on you, can they? 
Let's see, Biovax, that's what they're called. Click in Biovax number three, Administrator. And yeah, I'm not saying anything, so. I didn't pick that up on something I did earlier. I'm not going to walk them back over here just to get that. So I'll get it on Cyndaquil. So we'll get a few crystals. She doesn't really have space, per usual, but even worse so than normal, but Song does. So he'll get all the drops. He's got 33 slots. That should be enough. Uh, cast Ionis on me. Cast away. I've got them both on Puppet Master tonight. Um, might change it. I should have be on Warrior. There we go. A warrior is a sub job. Yeah, paladin, warrior. So I can hold the hate. We're gonna fight something probably a little bit too hard for us, but they need skill ups. Hopefully these things will give skill ups. Hopefully I'm not gonna update. Dang it! I'll go fight easier stuff. And bioback number three is where they're at. Yes, please. Over the weekend, um, we were out in Eshta Zata, and I was got out of my usual hunting area and started fighting stuff that was a little bit more difficult than what I was ready for. And um, we were all on Puppet Master because we were all trying to get skill ups. And I forgot to get the... well, I forgot. I chose not to get the... Uh, what do you call it? There's a key item that you can purchase with Silt. I don't remember the name of it at the moment. Mortifier. But it will... What was it? Nullifier? Nullifier, that sounds right. That'll prevent the uh, notorious monsters from spawning on top of you? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I didn't get that. And the Imana buggered popped. And we're like, it's okay, because we're on Puppet Master, and we all got three automatons, and I got healers out. We'll be fine. And for the first 90% of his uh, HP, we were. You know, puppets were tanking, we were all DPSing, and you know, life was good. And then I guess at 10% he enrages or something. Because it all went downhill so quickly. It's just like my puppet would lose hate. He would turn at Cyndaquil and just did this horrendous um, bite attack that did like 2,700 points of damage when she was on Puppet Master, not a paladin, but I don't even know if she would have had uh, enough defense to, uh, well, probably. Puppet Master don't exactly wear armor. And <laughs> it was just bad. And when Cynical goes down, the trust in PCs go down, so we lost the heals, and it's like, it's okay. The thing's almost dead. And then I'll just, you know, home point and, and be like, nope, that didn't work. Killed everybody really quick. And I'm like, all right, that's fine, that's fine. And just home point, come right on back. This would have been, I guess, Sunday morning during the gain XP. Came back, get in position, and somebody had moved into my camp. I was like, great. That always the way. You die, and you come back trying to reset something, and someone was all like, hey, it's my place now. I guess that is the way it works, but. But. Unfortunately for them, they also forgot to get the uh, key item to uh, turn off Notorious Monster Spawns, and <laughs> they've also popped the Amana Brother, and that's not who I was looking for. There's a Bedrock Frag. Target. Who did that? Who pulled the lizard? I bet it was Kohler Mower. I had the wrong thing targeted, didn't I? Yeah. It's okay. We live. Ish. But, uh. Ta da! I don't think we got any skill ups on. No. I'm not gonna pay attention to them. Um. And. What I should have done was started spamming cures on them, because I did switch a Cyndaquil's job to Paladin. And, um. Yeah. That person died, and the buggered was still up, and I was all like, you should take care of this guy. Just get him out of here before he does any more harm. And got him killed. 
Not before Cynical got herself killed again on Paladin. That same last 10%. Something happened where it seemed like it enraged. But, uh... Puppet Masters, they were able to pull it off. Life is good. We got a pair of shoes that dropped that she didn't already have, and I don't think she's ever going to use them, but... I think Dent had them. Which means we probably... Now, I remember fighting him with the uh, Unity and M fight. That's probably where he got those shoes. I digress. Home pointed, came back, loaded on the shoes. No problem. And it was around that time that the sun was coming up, and I was all like, I should go to bed. Because it was like 7 in the morning. It was like, the other part of me was going like, you're supposed to be making money right now. And I'm like, you're not making money. You're not getting anything gain XP because you're too busy fighting notorious monsters and dying and home pointing and, you know, not focusing. So we're not going to that zone. That's just a tall tonight. A bad taste in our mouth. We're also not going to be on for the whole three hours because if I read the server message correctly, they're going to be restarting it. The uh, servers. They're returning them off here 30 minutes sooner than usual. So we've got about an hour and 15 minutes left of actual gain XP. Is that going to be enough time to make 3 million gil? Probably not. But we're certainly going to try. At least with Puppet Masters. I'm like pinballing left and right into every single wall. I blame Final Fantasy XV. Camera. <laughs> that game is a little wonky. But, you know, it's a very beautiful game. That was also something else I was thinking. It's like, oh, this server update tonight. I'm not going to be able to play the whole time. In the back of my mind's going, well, can't play Final Fantasy XV. I'm like, yes, this is true. We're in Woe Gates. I should turn this on. At least I think. Oh, hold on, hold on. Alright, I don't need that one anymore. We killed him. Got the drop we needed. Fayin. We were there yesterday killing undead. Zatan number two. This is those buggards that proved to be so much of a hassle. Arcana with physical damage. Boom, boom, no, maybe. It's fine. No. <laughs> Cynical just needs to focus on moat carps, not, not even big fish. I mean, dead can pull up big fish, no problem. But we need space. So, alright. So I'm gonna go to objective list. I'm gonna go to region. I believe it's gonna be Aldolin number one. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh! Happy Monday. Oh, you can say Hecklo. I know what you mean. <laughs> and hello to you too. Want to draw me? No. Must be number two. Um, I say must be, doesn't mean it is. Wool Gates, Wool Gates number two. You already have it turned on? Dusty Twithorn, that's what I want to focus on. I don't know how their evasion is. I know Song the Dense uh, marksmanship on their Puppet Masters is not on the maxed outside. Cynical is horrible. Oh my goodness, I logged on to her Puppet Master yesterday and I was all like, let's see what the ranged uh, act skill is. And it was level 50. <laughs> that horrid face. I'm hitting buttons now without knowing what I'm hitting. I'm gonna click that one, and that one, and... There are Amorphs in here, but they do so many stat down stuff that I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. Silk Thread, no, no, no. Alright, that's fine. That's all you need. Hit the follow, hit the follow. I should have hit the uh, triple bucks earlier, but that gives me time to go to songs and click some things such as Vanquish Multiple Enemies. Oh, he still has one from yesterday. We didn't play a lot of Final Fantasy XI yesterday. Like I said, I logged him in, did some stuff, and then even when I went out doing stuff on Cyndaquil, I didn't even bother triple boxing because it just felt like it was going to be uh, too much of a hassle. I was really tired yesterday too. Mm. Subconscious, I wanted to start playing Final Fantasy XV. There was like two movies worth of uh, DVDs that came with that game. I was expecting just the Brotherhood, the anime. And I was like, alright, this is alright. I thought it was a little, well, 
I'm just glad I watched it first. And it was, uh, I took that out, and in the other deal was, uh, there were two cases. They're not within easy reach, but one had the uh, anime in it, and it has another disc, which I think is the soundtrack. Yep. And then in the other box, I figured it was just the game. I flipped it over, and it said, Kingslave. And I'm all like, I thought that was the uh, movie that they uh, did in theaters. I figured they'd be selling it separately. And underneath all the codes and instructions and stuff like that, you pulled that all over the way. It was even postcards. Um, I look at that, I got silenced. I should still have provoke. Wow. Glad these things don't link, right? Um, like a long story longer. Found Kingslave in the uh, little thing. So I was like, all right. This was the one that I had heard good things about. But I didn't know that my copy of the game was coming with it. <laughs> I figured it was just the action figure was what I was spending all the uh, money on. All right, I don't even know if my I tunes are actually even hitting. Art book? Mm hmm. Which I still haven't pulled out of its box yet. They, up on eBay, brand new, steel sealed, there's like 200 and something dollars. That's eBay. But. I've never been an art book kind of a person. I mean, I like books, I like art, but flipping through the. I take that back. The very first art book I ever bought, I was like, wow, freaking awesome. Oh my god. I spent way too many years of my life staring at the pages of that book. It was the uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I guess Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, TSR back when. That was the 80s. Dragonlance, Art of Dragonlance. And it was all the um, novel. Uh, cover art, all the uh, art that they had for their calendars, and they had several calendars, and Dragon Lance, such a great series. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, I mean, if you're going to read it, read it when you're like 13, 14. It's adult enough that, you know, get what's going on, but censored enough so that all the uh, fun bits happen, you know, during a page break. Once you get, I think, to your early 20s, you might be uh, missing out on... Well, no, I don't know. I, don't know. I try rereading it. I read them in my early 20s and actually enjoyed it. It was a... Uh, I'm trying to remember when I tried to reread it. I think it was like 24, 25. It was definitely after British Lit 2 and spent a enuberant amount of time with uh, Shakespeare. Say that was like a bad thing. No, it's, um, no, it's definitely no Shakespeare. Yeah, it's don't compare uh, Dragonlance novels to Shakespeare. That's not fair. It's and you know, one is poetry in play format, and the other is the uh, shorthand notes of somebody's uh, role play tabletop. <laughs> 1987. No, that's an exaggeration as well. I guess After Dragons of Autumn Twilight might be described that way. And out of all their series, I think that was the one I enjoyed the least. I, probably the one I tried uh, rereading. Because that was the first book. I'm going to read this in order. And what I should have done was I'm going to pick my favorite trilogy, which was. Uh, Test of the Twins. That was some high stuff. That was there. a very good one, too. Yeah. It, it's kind of like they had Test of the... That, that tr trilogy between Raceland and... How do you say his brother's name? Is it Cameroon? Cameron? I just say Cameron. Yeah. I think that's how I always did it, too, but when I got the uh, audible for it, they didn't pronounce it that way. It was, uh, it was real similar, but 
I'm always out of trouble with their last name too, Major. But no way. I can never get the last name done right. But I will say, Dragonlance has actually opened me to several other uh, series that they've written, mm -hmm. which are really good too. And Louise and Hickman. Yep. It's Gatsby Rhodes. Happy Monday, Gatsby. I had to look at the date, make sure it was still Monday. I always forget what day it is. Happens. Um, on a whim, I picked up a Dragonlance novel. We were living in Tennessee, so this would have been 88. Yeah, and uh, we were getting ready to uh, fly over to look for uh, houses in uh, Baltimore. His dad was getting transferred out there. And... Never had we actually gotten on a plane to go look at houses before. It was always get in the car. But a road trip from Memphis to uh, Baltimore is a little bit too far of a, uh, you know, drive. So mom was like, all right, we're going to uh, <laughs> Walden Books. <laughs> they don't have those anymore. <laughs> At least not in Texas. And uh, pick out a book. This way you'll have something to read on the plane. And we're like, okay, that's fine. And, um... Mom knew that I liked uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and she was like, "There's this book that I think you'll like. It's uh, about a dragon." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." And it was by Stephen King. But she didn't tell me it was by Stephen King. She's like, "Here, this is it." And I'm all like, "This is Stephen King." She's like, "Yeah, he's really good." I'm like, "It's horror." She's all like, yeah, "I think you can handle it." It's like, well, "It's not that I don't think I can handle it. I just well, one." First and foremost. Yeah. First and foremost, I don't like Stephen King. I've tried a couple of his books. I think I got through maybe the first chapter of Pet Cemetery before I uh, said, I don't like the protagonist. This guy, I mean, forgive language, people, but this, I think, uh, pretty much describes it. Um, lead character in Pet Cemetery is an asshole. And... <laughs> I mean, I'm one too, and I can appreciate a good one, but eh. your initial chapter is supposed to uh, in supposed to hook your reader, and this didn't hook me. This made me close the book, give it back to my mom, and say, "I don't know what you see in this." <laughs> I'm sorry, and, and so instead, I was like, "I'm just going to go down to the fantasy section and see what they got." and randomly picked um the uh, dragon lance's uh first volume of the tales trilogy i think at the time i was looking at it thinking these are short stories um so i don't know anything about it this seems to make sense to me you know don't have to necessarily get too invested into anything i had no idea who any of the characters were and all the short stories didn't spend any time whatsoever explaining who was who and what was what and because they expected you to already know this because there have been like six or nine novels already in this setting and I was okay with that I mean it's like I have no idea who this person is they're going into a story it seems kind of interesting and you know it was all right and so um I went ahead and I think I picked up uh, volumes two and three when I got back home. I don't remember if I read them then, or if I went straight to Tales because I not Tales, um, the Test of the Twin Trilogy. I read the second trilogy first before I went and actually started with the very first book with uh, Dragons of uh, Autumn Twilight. And man. If you're going to skip the first three, which is Twilight, uh, Winter, and uh, Spring, Let's see what they did there. Then you go straight into uh, Test of the Twins, Time of the Twins, and War. War of the Twins. You know, if you read that one first, don't bother with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it ends. Um, well, ah, that's not fair. 
Dragons of Winter Night was okay. I actually picked up the second one, so Winters. Uh huh. On a discount while I was down at a job site, went to like a Borders up here, mm -hmm. and they had that one on a display discounted, and I picked that one up randomly. The paperback, or was it the uh, hardcover uh, re-release? Hardcover originals. Very nice. All I have are paperbacks. I still, I still have them. If that tells you uh, anything. It was uh, with what happened to the binding with the uh, tales because I had read it and it tore up the uh, bind on it. Terrible. So it looks horrible when you put it on the shelf. And ever since then, every paperback that I've gotten, I hold in such. I grip the uh, bind so that it doesn't bend at all when reading it. And once I lent a copy out to a friend and uh, they tore up the binding and I was like, dude, it's just a paperback. And I'm like, it wasn't your paperback. <laughs> That's why I don't loan up books anymore. Because <laughs> I'm like, here, if it's a hardcover, yeah, I can loan it to them. No problem. But, you know, I expect it back in just as good condition as I give it to you. That's what I would do if somebody lent me one of their books. And then I came to the realization, is like, you don't loan books to people. Give them books. They expect not to get it back. And if they do give it back, then they probably didn't like it. <laughs> it's like, here, I don't want this on my shelf. Which is fine. I mean, I have uh, so many books. Not enough time to read them because... Well, shoot, it's 2016, we're still playing Final Fantasy IV. That's not the reason. Wait. Just uh, get more engaged with games. Even games on our phone, but... Oh well. This is good. Did you ever read the trilogy that the... I mean, when I stopped reading it, it started going a little downhill. And it was kind of like a Final Fantasy IV for part two, where it was like the adventures of their kids. What's their names? I played the games mm -hmm. there, but I haven't actually beaten that one. But no, I, yeah, I understand which ones you're talking about. It's like, Cameron had a kid, and he became a, uh, what did they call him? Was it a white mage, or did they call him a lawful wizards, or you know, the wizards wearing the white robes? They're not clerics. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, they had red mages, because they were the ones that were neutral, and then they had the uh, black wizards, and they were the ones that, you know, were the powerful ones, because... Screw your order. That was probably the one thing about... Um, Dragonlance I enjoyed the most was their emphasis on the balance. You know, you can't have um, chaos get the upper hand because that's going to destroy the world. And similarly, you can't have good get the upper hand and stamp out evil because that will also destroy the world. And you're like, how? That's a story. Back then, I was still religious when I started reading those. Mm -hmm. I had this... I was starting to taper into being agnostic at the time. Mm -hmm. So that that book series kind of flew, uh, fueled my my mind into, you know, having a theory that there is that whole pantheon mm -hmm. kind of a thing that they had set up in it. Now, even this game Slightly, not to the same extent, but the whole thing with you know the goddess representing good, Permathia representing not good. <laughs> he's not evil, but I guess she's more creation and he's more not destruction but uncreation. Uh, play a. Uh, Chains of Hermathia. They explain it a lot better than I ever could. Maybe. Probably not. I just know what happens if he loses. I mean, if uh, we lose, and you get a Vizio. Oh, 
spoiler. Shit. Have you read any of the newer ones from the series post uh, original set, original three? I think as the uh, last trilogy that I did read was the uh, second uh, trilogy of uh, Heroes. And I was like, I think the very last one I read was uh, Kaz the Minotaur. And I loved The Legend of Huma, so I was like, yes, a continuation of that. And, uh, no. <laughs> I think it was after that, so like... It was, uh, so you read through the second generation set and everything? I don't think so. I remember seeing them and being tempted, but never actually, uh... No, I don't think I ever got through the second generation. The second generation is pretty good. Uh, the third generation, um, Amber something, a three book series, really uh, emphasizes on what the Pantheon can do and stuff like that. Okay. Did they ever leave the continent? Or did they... Yes and no, but they still kept on the main one pretty much. Since that's where all the lore was, everything else was just, uh, there are other continents. There's a place where the Minotaur come from. But, uh, yeah, I think they were just basically left it to the, we don't know. I guess my favorite out of the entire pan the entire genre or the entire Dragonlance series would actually be the ones on the founding of the three Elven nations. Ah, I remember those. But yeah, that was a very good combination. Because they even had a uh... because everything was in threes in this. Series. They had three different um, nations of uh, elves, didn't they? I believe there was actually four. Oh, okay. Because there was also the sea elves, too. Oh, okay. I don't know if they count, but. There were the wild elves, and they were kind of subjugated by um, Gold Moon's people. So many names. <laughs> yeah, it's a very broad. I mean, it's like. <laughs> I don't know of a single series or single world that has that many books specialized in explaining each individual race, mm -hmm. each different area, each different story. I mean, it pushes Star Trek mm -hmm. to the limits on comparing in books and explanations and everything. Well, I like what they did with the Kender. It was like, they almost didn't have um, halflings. I remember reading that the... Uh, development team was uh, split in half as to whether or not the to do halfling. Was half of them were like no, it's too token. Not that what they were doing was already too token. But uh, it was going you can't have a uh, role playing uh, series without having halflings in it because the fans would say hey, where's our furry feeted halfling people? So they decided to come out with a how shall we say, halfling-like. But the Kinder, who knew no fear, but were natural-born thieves, and they didn't see themselves as thieves, they just like to borrow stuff. It's like, hey, always borrowed. you Never dropped sealed. this, and by drop, by, you know, it fell into my hand. No, and it I just, was just happened going, to be in his hand. Hold on to it for you. It's a good thing that I found it, too, because... You would have never been able to find it. <laughs> Just... Okay, so the second generation actually takes place at the very end of the first one. Mm -hmm. So after book three, so spring, whatever. Spring um, dawning, yeah. Yeah, spring dawning. Right at the end of that book, it kind of segues into the second series. 
Okay. And it's it's a real doozy, and it's based off of the Kether. Okay. So just might have to give it a try. I mean, I was able to read some of the uh, Warcraft novels, and those were those were hit and miss. The ones by uh, Richard Knack, I liked, who also was the dude that wrote um, Legend of Huma. It's, I guess this yeah. is kind of a telling of me. I, I like it when he writes for characters that he didn't create. He's really good. But his own original works, which I've tried a couple different books. No. <laughs> I couldn't get it to. <laughs> Unfortunately. I don't know, it's been there's a, a There's a couple other series um, that I really like that I probably should get to suggest to you, too. Okay. One of them is the Dragon Sea. Or, okay. Um, yeah, it's by this guy. And let me get the series for you. All right. I'm also writing stuff down in Notepad because you know how I get. <laughs> what was that stuff? Bum, bum, bum. Ravenloft was another series that I got into. Mostly because of the uh, cover art. Thank you. Okay, so this series is really good. It's like a combination between what if all the humans were wiped out or something, mm -hmm. and dragons took over the world, but still had humans and basically enslaved them. Oh, okay. So like uh, the backstory of Skyrim. Well, no, yeah, no. pretty much. <laughs> but the thing is, is once you get to the end of the series. Mm -hmm. You realize it's totally different than what it starts out as. It's like it actually goes a step beyond and actually kind of... It actually like takes place in the future. Okay. Oh, and they got a fourth bit. Crap, I need to read that one. I gotta toss something. The Sand Charm. I might come back to that one. Dang. Here we go, a minnow. I've got lots of minnows. I'll drop the minnow. Bye, minnow. Now quickly, before my inventory gets filled up with something else. Go to quest, go to current. It's not to gain XP, it would be... Ah! That one. Alright. Sorry about that. Back to the killage. So there's a twist in it where you think since humans are enslaved and dragons are their lords and overseers that therefore humans are the good guys, dragons are the bad guys. Because we're human. Well, it starts out as if it's like medieval times. Mm -hmm. and at the end of it, it actually you realize that it's actually further in the future than now. Mm -hmm. The dragons are so just it's, a... It's really a really good series. So, uh, anime it was a, a bastard. That's where I got the uh, character name for uh, Dark Schneider from. That's a segue. It is one of those that it's swords and sorcery, and it's kind of set within the style of the '80s. So everyone's got big hair, and all the women have big, uh, you know, oh, they show lots of skin. I'll we'll just say that. Not exactly one to watch with the kids. But, you know, that's why they called it Bastard. Anyways, um, also so, set... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just about to talk about another series. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, set in the distant future where it looked like a modern man had, a, how shall we say, created something that uh, was supposed to be like a weapon of war and it got out of hand and basically destroy the world as um, we know it and the survivors were set back so far 
that uh, they went back to a feudal system with uh, knights and armor and no electricity and it's not that I don't think it was um, that they were maybe they were afraid of using technology I don't know where to go into that but the anime was okay the manga I hear went way way far hey have a 1420 happy Monday <laughs> we going with this? All right, you were about to suggest something. So I put a link to the first book of another series, mm -hmm. called the, and it's by Tracy and Laura Hickman. Okay. And basically, this is a three-part series, also a trilogy. I like that, the three-parters. That is based off of. Um, I mean, the world's basically separated into three parts. Okay. And basically, yeah. the main of it is set in the human world, which is the neutral world. Okay. Then you have the goblin world, which is the dark world, and then you have the fairy world, which is the light world. Wouldn't it have been fun if they had uh, flipped that around? Fairies would have been the dark world. Goblins would have been the light. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a real interesting because the humans are able to communicate to one of the other worlds. Oh, okay. Let's see. So they kind of affect each other, and it's actually it's another very good series that I enjoy reading. Really. Thanks, and that cool. one's actually relatively old too. I like old. That was the one that showed the hardcover for one cent. It wasn't telling of the uh, worth of the book. It's just Amazon in December. It's an 04 book. It's not that old. I've got books that are older. Uh, children's little small hardcover of uh, explaining uh, Greek mythology to uh, it was basically I guess designed to uh, go over the uh, myths except uh, it was for an audience of uh, 1885 because that's the copyright of it I was like wow Is I this? had a beginner's Latin book that mm -hmm. was dated 1886 it was my great grandmother's. Oh wow! Oh, this one. It was a. It was a Latin convention. Well, they called it a. It Latin clubs. They called it the uh, Junior Classical League. That's what it was for high school. When you were in college, it was the Senior Classical League. But uh, we have little uh, district competitions of different categories and stuff, and. Uh, at regional state and if you did uh i think if you got like the first or second spot in the state then they would send you on to uh nationals do the same thing and uh i don't know if it's because the competition wasn't that good or if i just took the test really well or a combination of the two it's not how many people are going to take it um i always got to go to nationals and it was in when we were in san diego and it was like this little uh I guess a book fair type thing and they've gotten out all their old classical books because hey these kids they uh they like the old stuff so we'll get all the old books out and everybody else could care less and i was just flipping through it and i saw this really old one and it was like five bucks and i knew a lot of money on me at the time so i was like yeah get the small one for five bucks it wasn't until that i got it home and flipped it open that I found it, and I was like, oh, it's a kid's book. And I saw the copyright. Oh! It's an old kid's book! <laughs> uh, Throw the moves. I haven't lost that one yet. So, I just saw it just actually when I was a. Uh, I put my coffee cup on a bookshelf when I walk in the door. I was cleaning up the kitchen earlier. I was like, alright, where'd you put that coffee cup? I was like, oh, it's over there. Except the old books. All the hardcovers. 
Let me redecorate it. I want to do knickknacks on that shelf instead of uh, piling all my books. Got too many. Not enough shelves. It's always been that way. I like the idea of having a big library. Not that I like to sit there and read books all the time. I just like to go into a room where that's all, all it is. Bunch of shelves, bunch of books. You know. They don't have borders anymore, so. Walden books. I got Barnes and Noble, and it's the same. I hate, I'm sorry, Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Up here we have a half price book, so basically they sell everything <laughs> in the store half this label. You know that originated in Texas? Yep. Okay, that's right. Blender <laughs> Simpson. Boom. Basically, I don't know. I'll, I'll buy Probably books didn't. off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'll go and buy the physical if I actually like the book enough. Sounds fair. You know, the Mrs. collects um, this one series. I don't remember the name of it. It's kind of a. Well, it's like borderline romance, borderline. Supernatural kind of stuff. There's probably quite a few genre or series that fall into that genre. I think Anita Blake comes to mind, but I don't think that was it. Anyways, she's always uh, been looking for the uh, hardcovers. Exact same reason. She likes half them all and puts them all on the shelf. But uh, a lot of these have been out of print for uh, a long time. And you look for stuff on Amazon, and they've got the, you know, only run print, you know, going for like two, three hundred dollars because supply and demand. I'm not going to spend three hundred dollars on a used book. I came across that with um, the anime, the girl who left through time, the original. Uh, studio that actually put it on disc mm -hmm. no longer printing them as much as they went under dvd or laser disc uh dvd okay yeah, and if you could actually manage to find one you're looking at like a 350 dollars price tag <laughs> that them there is a lot but, it's anime, and as the bumper sticker that I saw once said, anime, colon, drugs would be cheaper. That's so true. <laughs> yes, but, very uh, much. <laughs> you can almost point that at video games, too. That's not true. Well, not all video games. It's The price of video games has kind of remain stable. I mean, Nintendo seems like they've been charging 50, 60 bucks for their games since the uh, dawn of the uh, Nintendo Entertainment Center. Center. System. Sorry. People get offended when I say it wrong. Uh, but, uh... Bah. It used to be you'd never see a game for more than 50 bucks, and now it's like you never see a game for more than 60 bucks. Inflation. Ten bucks, I can live with that. Unless you're like Lanos and I, where we spend almost $300 for a $60 game before we even had a chance to play it. But, hey, it was available. <laughs> with what you played of 15 so far, think it made the wise investment? Or is it like, I'm so sticking this uh, action figure on eBay while well, the hype is still good? The parts, I might. I've been considering it, but I probably won't. Mm -hmm. But the hype, I think it's starting to hold up a little bit. It does get a little bit repetitive because the quests are from the same people. Mm -hmm. With the same, sometimes good, sometimes not so good voice actors. 
Yeah, but I'm also only like level 20. So it's kind of hard to really That's judge than me. that way. I was watching uh, King Clave, and I was watching it, you know, the Japanese dialogue, the English subtitles, because it's usually better. But when it came time for the credits, they showed the um, voice actor's name, the guy that did the motion capture, and the one that they basically did the body scan of. And sometimes all three folks were the same person, but. They didn't. I don't remember them showing the uh, Japanese voice actors' names, unless that was Sean Bean doing Japanese for King. What was it Regis? I think that was the character. And Clave Twenty Three. Happy Monday. We got about thirty-five-ish minutes left of Final Fantasy Eleven before they start turning the server off. Oh. Gonna keep doing that, and once that's turned off, I'm gonna go bah, and power up Final Fantasy 15 because uh, <laughs> it was two o'clock in the morning last night, and I was still playing it, and I did take my sleeping pills on time. Yeah, maybe about an hour late, but yeah, you lose a lot of time on that game. <laughs> it's like it's midnight, and I'm thinking, all right, I'll just keep playing until you start to get a little drowsy. And then 1 a.m. came, and I was like, you should be drowsy now. 2 a.m. came, and I'm thinking, I wonder how difficult it'd be to drag my entertainment center into the bedroom. Because that's how I did 13 when it first came in. Actually, uh, I just set the whole thing up. <laughs> I had a brand new TV for 13. Oh, that was the question I wanted to ask. First, uh... Five, ten hours into the game. Better game than 13? Or is 15 a better game than 13? By far. By far. Alright. Better than 12? Yes. Okay. But 13 does have a lot of... Or 15 does have a lot of aspects of 12. Yes. The whole hunt system seems to be uh, the exact same thing. Pretty much. The hunt system is what I'm having the most trouble with. And so, like, being a. Uh, what was that first starter zone? Hammerfall or Hammerhead? It's wherever uh, the uh, mechanic's granddaughter who uh, is not appropriately dressed. <laughs> Her name's Cindy. And I'm like, all right, well, I did the mission here, but before I turn it in, let's get the side stuff done because I don't want to come back if I don't have to. Realizing that it's very easy to come back, you just hop in the car. Um, you use the shortcut. The what the shortcut? The first oh, I did that once, and I thought it was going to send me back to the last town that I was at. I'm like, no, it's going to send you back to the last place that you spent the night. Which happened to be a uh, campsite that was like way further away than where I wanted to be. And I was like, ah. Oh. Well, there should also be the option of return to your car. Oh, this was before we picked up the car. It was still in the shop. Um, once you get the car, you're able to actually uh, quick travel mm -hmm. to parking places. Okay. Or you could take the nice leisurely stroll in the car on the left. Yeah. Which is how I plan on doing it, because why wouldn't you want to spend more time in that car? Have you adjusted the uh, decals for it yet? I am enjoying the Leviathan one from the collectors. Okay. It's like, I got that one from the Collector Edition. There's also one that Square Enix had as part of their uh, promotion. It was like once a week they had like a raffle. And it was like... The very first one that you probably got was going to be the uh, skin that had a... How shall we say... What was her name? Cindy? The mechanic's granddaughter? Sid's granddaughter? She was a... Uh, Basically, it was a model skin of uh, her character. 
plaster to the side of your car, and I'm like, that's a little tacky, but maybe it looks better in game. And it would be very famous of trying to get it. I just wanted the one with the, uh, shoot. They had a, one of the events was a custom Xbox One or PlayStation 4 that, uh, had some very nice, uh, coloration to it that kept with the theme. I think they had something similar for, shoot, what was the, dang it, the last one that came out on the Xbox One, Final Fantasy, it had the, uh, demo. Or Final Fantasy XV. Type Zero. Type Zero, thank you. One of these days I'll re remember that without actually having to stop and look it up. Maybe. Alright, I saw that one. At least the coloration for it. And I was like, ooh. Ooh, I'm not interested in the game, but I'm interested in that Xbox. It was full. And, uh. <laughs> that alas. Well, if you got it from the game GameStop, mm -hmm. one of your copies, you'd actually gotten a decal for your controller. Oh, okay. So mine's kind of decked out in that. There you go. It's sweetness. I should say hi. She had a scare Saturday night after uh, you logged out. Yeah, she was telling me about it. I mean, it's... I can count the number of times on one hand that I've told somebody through uh, text to call the police. <laughs> this was one of them. And I wasn't the only person in the Link show telling her this. I was all like, you got two people all typing at the same time. And it was like, uh... <laughs> they're like, put the game down, call the cops, get your kids. And if you're armed, load your weapon, you know. I'm just one of those real life gets scary kind of moments and fortunately everything worked out for the best so crisis averted boom 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 but we should track that out because we should talk about that really I don't know if she wants me talking about that on the stream but fun times she's uh got access back to her uh, original character with all the level 99 jobs to it. They're not geared yet, but uh, they will be. I, I wanted to drag her into uh, Ambuscade last week to uh, replace Koru Maru. I was all like, you got a uh, Refresh 2 and Haste 2, right? She's like, yeah. But I don't have any 119 gear. Like, you don't need it. I just need you hasting and refreshing. You're like, I'm not your refresh for and I'm like, but they got really awesome pajamas that you can get. They're like, they got pajamas. And it's like, you can see Song and Dent actually sporting them right now. I forget what this uh, set was called back in the good old days. But the, uh, I was gonna say it's something Manteel, but nah, I never had it, so. But, yeah, that looks quite comfortable. You could probably fall asleep in that. Maybe. That's it. Just need to get some uh, person that does outfits for role players and say, hey, make these into pajamas. Probably already out there. Savage Blade, too early. I should have waited till afterwards. I got it in a skill chain. Oh well. Alright, next time. T minus 26 minutes. Ta da! Because we're getting merit points. Citical's probably already capped. Status. Merit. I was able to help uh, Terran get um, some of his Chapter 7s for his uh, White Mage body. This was on. Nice. Um, this would have been Saturday, I think. The weekend, it all blends together. I don't even feel like I played the game yesterday, but I guess I did something. Turn around. 
scared of him. I thought I saw one. Assist. Assist. Um. I was going to talk about something else. I say, people, don't get old. Or if you do, I'm just glad that I use math as much as I do every day in my job because uh, I don't want to know what my brain would be like right now if I wasn't doing algebra on a daily basis. Other people go, ew, why would you want to do that? And I'm like, it's not that you don't want to do it. You need to do it. I mean, get the right dosages, folks. It's not hard. It's just not fun. <laughs> we get to... I was figuring out the price to charge. Because you want enough so you can actually make a profit and be worth doing, but not so much that tell the customer, this is going to be $300. Like, no. I don't want it. Call the doctor. Tell him I want something else. And of course, the doctor says, no, she has to have it. She doesn't like the price. Tell her to try a different pharmacy. Boom, 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 boom. Giving the patient what they want. That's, I guess, 1998. That's not true. It was earlier than that. Ugh. I'm not going to talk about work. Apologize. Maybe. No. Still apologizing. Let's go back to 15. The haunts. I was having trouble with those. It was like the very first one, real easy. It's like a level 2 mob. You're fighting level 2 mobs, anyways. Everywhere you go. You know, kill these things, come back, get a reward. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Next one was a little bit higher level. It was like level five. It was, uh, they looked like the... Uh, what do they call them? Mesmerizers? The horses. They had a yeah. lightning horse in Final Fantasy X. It's like, kind of has a unicorn horn, but it's more like a saber. Oh, a curved blade coming out of their head. I guess it would still make it a unicorn. I actually kind of like those creatures. They're kind of cool. Mm hmm. They had one in uh, FF11. It was with the Wings of the Goddess. I don't remember the name of it. They get dropped the cave. Ah, that, that one, cool. yes. I remember the first time I saw an endgame show that had the claim on it. They were testing things out with just one player at a time. Because they were wanting to see what was effective, what wasn't. It was just sheer, we don't know what this uh, mob does. We don't know uh, Hidden Rages and all this other stuff. And I think what they found out was um, it'll run away after a certain percentage of damage was done to it, it like go to a different zone, but its health wouldn't replenish. So it's all like, say you did, got it down to like 10% and then lost it, just warped out. I might be wrong with this. Again, I've never fought it. It's just what I remember hearing other people say, whether or not they knew what they were talking about. No idea. I'm sure they got a wiki about it, if you're interested. But... I've only seen the mob maybe a couple of times, just randomly, going through uh, Wings of the Goddess Zones. And I want to say, the last time that I saw it, I tried uh, to get some type of claim on it, just to, you know, figure I was going to get killed anyways, but I couldn't claim it. So, probably some other stuff going on. Or maybe it was part of a quest. They got a lot of uh, odd quest wings of the goddess. Campaign ops, I think is what they called it. It's part of that. Hmm. Still haven't been able to play. Um, well, there's a uh, final fight in the campaign ops for wings of the goddess. Um, why can't I? Fiat Lux, I think is what it's called. Where basically you're fighting the uh, Shadow Lord in the past, doing um, the job that uh, Zed was supposed to have done, maybe assisting him. And 
Fiat Lux is Latin. Coming back to that for Let There Be Light, if I remember correctly. My Latin teacher is going to hold his face in his hands if he finds out I couldn't remember that one. I don't remember much Latin. I remember sedete. That means sit down. That's how we would start every class. And sedete, well, the ending to it would be y'all sit down, addressing everybody. Should be talking about Latin in Final Fantasy game. Except... Lanos, did you do the quiz that they had on the Xbox for uh, Final Fantasy 15 where it like, tested uh, general trivia? It starts out really easy and then as you get more and more questions right it starts to uh, give you harder and harder and more, I guess, detailed questions mm -hmm. and no, I haven't. They have a leaderboard. Top 10 players that got the top 10 scores. And the best score I was able to get... Because after a while, it's the same questions. They just have the uh, multiple choice answers in uh, different spots. Um, the best score I was able to get was like 1,100,000 points. The leaderboard, everybody that's on it, is like 11 million points. And I'm all like... Without cheating, and that's what I started thinking is like maybe they cheated, because one of the dudes he's got his name on the leaderboard like three or four times. He's got like I think the guy's number one. He's got like three or four of the uh, number one slots. He just might be really really good, or has a really really good connection, or maybe he just keeps uh, spamming the uh, A button, hoping that. All his answers are going to be the very first uh, selection, so he's not wasting time with a... Uh, using the arrow key to go up and down. <laughs> kind of like this. Because it's uh, there's also a timer. You get bonus points for uh, how quickly you answer. I think that's what gets you the uh, extra million. Or 11 million. Oh well. No achievements at associated with it. That's a shame. And, very proud to say that I actually started getting Xbox achievements again last night. I don't think that I've been really getting any since uh, we got the last achievement on Final Fantasy XI. That was over a year ago. Let's see what this game has done. It used to be an achievement horror. You know, like, I'm going to play this game, I'm going to get all the achievements in it, and I'm going to drop it like a brick and go on to the next one. It was how we did Skyrim. Played that game until we got every single achievement in there. All the, uh, what do you call it, um, DLC achievements. Everything. And then, when we got the last one, took the game out, put a new one in. Although, that game, Skyrim, that was hard. I wanted to keep playing that one after I got the last achievement. But not enough where I actually did. Final Fantasy XI, on the other hand, well, I mean, we had a hard time putting it down before I didn't even know about Xbox achievements for it. This one we've been continuing to play after you got all the achievements. be neat if they somehow make it available for uh, play on a console again. Even if it's like, you know, streaming per se. There's nothing quite as comfortable sitting on the couch with a controller in your hand. Fishing. FF11. They got fishing in Final Fantasy 15. It's... <laughs> excuse me. Similar. Not the same. Of course... Fishing Final Fantasy XI is not the same as what it used to be either. I went to... Fishing in the past was easy. Yeah. Well, it was like, when the game first came out, we're talking like 2002, there was no minigame to it. You just slash fish. And 
Sometimes you would get a fish. Sometimes you wouldn't. Sometimes your line would break. Sometimes your rod would break. I don't think you had really any control over... But sometimes you would also pull up a bad guy. It was just... Luck. I guess it was a lot like item synthesis, where... You use the crystal, you select the items, and hope for the best based upon your skill. Sometimes you'd get the item you want to make, sometimes it would high quality, sometimes it would break. It was uh, making bait on a Cyndaquil, I think it was like meatballs, because we were going after silver sharks for a guild point item. Ah. The very first one she made, it's like a level 40-ish synth, that's probably lesser than that, it's probably closer to 20. I don't know. Um, it's rabbit meat, flour, and water. I think it was a fire crystal. Maybe an earth crystal. Probably an earth crystal. It's not like you were cooking the rabbit meat. Anyways, the very first one she does, she's got like level 102 cooking skill with a whole bunch of bonuses and gear. It blows up. It's a critical blow up. It's lost everything. Lost some rabbit meat and some flour. It's not the end of the world, but that's all I... Every now and then. Lennox just closed darkness for 55k. This is... I'm just going to share this in the link shell chat. <laughs> Why the mob forgets who the tank is. You know, it's all like... Lennox is great. He'll do uh, darkness. And he'll use the trick attack. The sneak attack. And... That whole hate thing is supposed to get tricked onto the tank. But somehow, somehow, the monster knows. I don't think that Paladin closed the darkness for 55k. I think it was that Taru Taru that was standing behind him is now trying to move behind another place that you saw nothing. But, uh,. Stuff don't live long after that. At least, most stuff doesn't live long after that. Flash. Assist. Assist. It's going to take this opportunity. I'm going to check Songarthol's uh, automaton's skill, see if it's gone up at all. Oh, it's almost capped. 424 out of 434. Okay. Doing quite well. Let me check out Dent. His was lower. I don't think he's got the same attachments in his. Oops. His is sitting at 235 out of 430. Okay, his is not going up. Oh well. We'll fix that later. Cynical's is lower. 23k distortion. Now they're just having fun. Well, yeah. I just hit a 5k something something on my pally. These aren't Apex mobs. They're. Oh shoot. I, mean, I don't think they're close to Apex models. They are very tough. Which is awesome. Oh yeah! Picked up um, Puppet Master capes for everybody and upgrade stuff. I haven't upgraded them yet. I actually want to do a little bit of research to see what would be uh, the better thing. But Automaton level plus one. I kind of like that. Um, because since Cyndaquil, and only Cyndaquil, has the Divinator, which makes your Automaton 119, and I would think that having the Divinator plus the Cape would make your Automaton level 120? That's a guess. I don't know that for sure. Assist. And assist. And... Savage Blade! And maybe Dent will do that thing and wasn't timed properly. Actually, I don't know if they do skill change with in that order. No, they do it the other way around. That was Sungarth. What was the time for the win? What are they doing? I still got full health? Good. No! Oh. Songarthol is also on a 
when you use uh, too many moves. Overload? No. Overloaded, that's what it was. This is no longer overloaded. <laughs> is that time? She could, who are we gonna say there? I think she's gonna turn around, isn't she? Yep, this was our 10 minute warning. Yep. All right. Time's a ticket. I don't know how many more 5Ks we can get. I think basically every mob we're killing gets us, yeah, a gain XP reward because 7,177 XP off that last mob. You only need 5,000. What I was wanting to do was a uh, words. It'll come back to me eventually. Um, Geomancer, which is what we kind of did Friday night. Because we didn't have our skill high enough for uh, <laughs> finish the uh, Corsair stuff. Still don't have our cloth crafting up high enough. We got some levels. We went from like 58 to uh, 63. That's a decent enough jump. I just want to get it up to 70. Then I can start attempting to make the uh, I think it's called Wolf Felt. Which one of the items needed to Corsair? I guess the fringe on the collar. <laughs> Maybe it's on the hat. Oh, I don't remember. Got a guide. He'll tell me what it's for. But, uh... They didn't have any on the auction house either. I'm sure I could have gotten the mats. Went out to and did a shout. Need a cloth crafter. Uh, make this. I've got the mats. You can have this. I'm gonna put like 50k tip or something. Should get somebody going. I can do that. And give them the stuff. They give it back to you. Give them the 50k, and all's well and good. Maybe give them the 50k first. I don't know exactly how that works. Simply because I've never done it that way before. I always like. I always want to be the guy that says I can do that. I really can't. Other people spend a lot of time, money, get to where that is. And the thing is, like, it's only level 75. You can get to level 70 very easily these days, as far as crafting goes. Wonder if that carries over to fishing as well. Being like the first 70 levels of fishing skill ups. Quickly. I think so, but I'm not 100% sure either. And then there's the uh, question does it carry over with synergy? Skillips. So that's something we've never learned. Part of me wants to, another part of me goes, wonder which character you should level it on, another part's going, you should probably level it on all of them. If you're wanting to do it right. Just. And the mechanic is different. It's not one of those things that you can just create a last synth macro. Hit that, go make a sandwich, come back, and uh, hey, I got a level. You know, synergy, you have to actually be watching the pressure cooker, adjusting for this and that, and I don't know what happens if you actually go AFK. I do know that you can take serious da well, it's serious damage. You can take damage while working the thing. I think if it explodes, it'll take some of your health away. Oh, they've got gear that reduces the amount of damage you take. Whoa! Doing a synergy? I've seen that. But, I don't know. There are some real cool things it looks like that you can get with maxed out synergy. And one day we'll probably do it. Just not today. I have no idea. Maybe Song. It has like nothing as far as crafting skill goes. And leather crafting might be like 10. Only because there was. I was needing to make um, wool cloth. And. I didn't want to go farming all the sheepskins myself. So what I did was I had Cyndaquil and Song at the Leather Crafting Guild. 
buying a bunch of a uh, sheepskin and then using a wind crystal to do I think it was it makes a tough of wool just kind of like a the uh, how shall we say unrefined form of it like you had just shaved it off the uh, sheep or lamb or whatever kill faster because we got five minutes and normally Square Enix wants you to log out but we don't do it that way we just keep fighting until uh, they turn it off and we get the R0 1-1000 2 3-1000 swing no idea what that skill chain is I know a lot of people like it but it's not fusion so therefore it's not one that I ever paid any attention to because fusion's the best as far as level 2 skill chains go in my book but that's just me everybody has their favorite um, we're talking about something else though <laughs> weren't we it'll come back to me no it won't probably have gone now. Dang it. Boy, he's too close. Okay, they turned around. We've got... Song's at 72 merits. Dental's at 73. We might be able to cap that out. If only we had a real black page. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing like 26 to 55k villagers on skill chains. She has three S's at the end, doesn't she? Yep. I'll get there someday. I guess so will Dent. No, he won't. Focus on him being Monk. He's gonna have all the jobs at 99. KC, you know. If we ever need somebody to stand on the uh, three mage door, it's like, hey, how come white mage for that? And Cynical was like, hey, I'll just bring the key item. Open it. Just don't want to rely on that. Yay! Got that one last kill and start working our way towards the zone line. Assist. Assist. Is there any treasure that. Yeah, let's get. That sacred kindred crest, if nothing else. Oh, they're kind of cool. Um, trigger. Pass. And then... I have a cynical pass, because she has no space. Pass. There we go. I won't feel too bad if we lose all those wind crystals, because you have a lot of wind crystals and... Shivites and... There we go. We are now starting the maintenance, and all worlds will be shutting down. Please log out immediately. Like, yeah, yeah. Flash. Let's see how many players are still on. How many have logged out? It is Monday night. It is gain XP, though. We're going to do all areas. 165 players have not heeded the warning to log out, so about 50%. really don't like that move. Oh well. Do they fly above your head? Land someplace else. Oh! Something else I found out. This back to the Xbox One. Um, I want to say the 360, ha or maybe it was the games that I played on the 360, had the ability, but no, not all TVs are created equal, and I've got a rear projection style HD set. This the one with uh, the mirrors. Anyways, the quality's fine, but there's a little bit of uh, overscan or underscan with uh, some of the games. And I remember on the 360, it wasn't that big a deal because most games in their configuration had a way of shrinking the image to fit your TV screen or widening it. Or maybe it was just the Xbox 360 itself that had that. 
I have not found that option on the Xbox One. I found something that says this, it, you should be able to see blue lines here, you know, and I'm so doubtful. Why are you getting so much CP? Cyndaquil has quite a few bonuses, um, and it's Lord Quaz. Happy Monday, Lord Quaz. Uh, we'll see how much she got the last time. That was also capacity chain 19, so that helps out. 3,520 points. Forget what she's up to now. It's not like do the math. She's got all the uh, Record of Eminence uh, bonuses for finishing um, like the all three nations. Uh, Chains of Promethea, you get like 10% for each of those. Happy Monkey Day. Hello, Wonder Toys. <laughs> Happy Monkey Day to you, too. Um, we're also cheating a little bit by using a particular cape that gives capacity points plus 47 percent on top of that you get like maybe 300 at the most without chains that's i think what song and dent are getting if i pull up song Garthol's last one he got well actually he got a decent amount too 963 off that last one the mobs we're fighting are a little bit higher level than some of the outland mobs you'll notice this guy is a very tough but not an Apex mob. I think Apex mobs are take just a little bit too much time for me to uh, take down. But it also has to do with job points. I think you're going to be getting not so great points until you get to, like your first hundred job points. Yeah, you in sick gates. Now I think this is woe. Let's see. Yeah, woe gates. But that little red spot right there on the map. And that was only 2243 because uh, I broke the chain. Going back to status, job points, Paladin is at 1110, so I've got quite a few of the capacity point bonus upgrades. Last one is additional 31%. But those ones are like level 124. That'd be about right. This is what we would try to be fighting if it was a good old-fashioned XP party back in the good old days. If you had like a real party of six. What mobs are just about very tough. Some incredibly tough, some can go down to a little bit of tough, but you know, that little range. I'm gonna go ahead and Savage Wave. I'm gonna get disconnected any moment now. Sometimes Square Enix They'll save Quetzi for last, so you can get like an extra 15 minutes of gameplay after the uh, thing told you to shut it down. I think we got like uh, two extra stacks of fish one time when I was uh, fishing after the uh, servers were supposed to get turned off. And uh, sometimes they just turn it off like the very first one, so like sw switch is flipped. I think one time they turned it off like, you know, a couple of minutes before the. Uh, Suppose a time. Now, once Dent gets around 500 or 600 job points, he could probably move on to where I go to camp. Ah, which is about 128 to 30. That'd be fun. What I really need to do is, uh. What's the word I'm looking for? Get their, uh. Automatons capped out so they can actually hit the mob, do some damage. Probably change trust NPCs around for that. Get more skill ups. All of those, I believe, are 128 plus. Ah, the Apex mobs. I don't have enough TP. No, now we're all silence. The bats. I'm sweetness already logging out. Look, don't have much of a choice, do we? <laughs> There we go. One more kill. 2.2k capacity points we didn't have before. I haven't really done any CP and yet still working on gear. I spent a long time working on gear too. And then we started doing ambuscade going, this is a lot easier. It helps. <laughs> no! Try that again. 
So my big fear is there's going to be like a sliver of health left on the mob, and then the receiving data is going to drop to zero. I'm all like, oh no, do we get the kill? Is it still attacking us? Did the internet just go out? But yeah, did some serious CP grinding during the last CP chain campaign. This is true. Lenos, how uh, have you mastered your job yet? 2004, getting close. Oh my goodness, 21 under my beast and pup up to 119. Thanks to Ambuscade. <laughs> they need a level summon or two. I think it was um Saturday evening that I got the uh, final points that I needed for the uh, one the high quality version body piece for everybody. And then I want to say actually I should be wearing them right now. Shouldn't I? Yeah, I went ahead and used way too many um, hallmarks to uh, get the plus one pants that I didn't get the month before. There we go. The pants are good. I like the pants. It's, I still didn't get the body piece because I didn't want to go grinding out 7,000 hallmarks more in a day just for that body piece that I would probably not use that much but, but yeah, I'm going to do 109, 114. For a while, that's all that we were able to do, too. I remember, um... <laughs> it was a labor of love. <laughs> the 109. Um, it might as well have been, like, a very intense... And there's our r zeros. Dang it. Hopefully I still got hate. Um, we could barely do 109 when we started. Yeah, it was like whole 30 minute fight. And it's like everybody wiped. And um, I'm kiting the boss around the room like it's Kieran. While everybody else is coming off of weakened status. And normally it's like when people start to fall, I'm all like hands up in the air. It's like, yeah, we lost. Everybody home point. Let's do this again. And Deoden was with us at the time. And he was like, no, 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 no. It's, we haven't lost yet. I'm like, but we don't lose the key item. <laughs> like, no, no. Just sure you don't. All right, so that's going to be it for tonight. I wonder if it will let me actually take a look at my points. It will. All right, since I had used up most of my Unity accolades earlier, I got that quite a bit refilled. Um, I believe there are some more. Well, we got double Unity accolades going on, right? Not double unity accolades. You got double unity notorious monster coffers dropping right now. So, say that what we were fighting earlier, this eft for uh, Terran needed an ear ring. Um, normally, you get one coffer for every 1500 unity accolades that you would trade or use to pop the boss. And now you get two. And you also get other stuff like money and spells, crafting materials, upgrade materials, you know, little stuff like that. So what I think I'm going to do... Hmm. Dan's got a lot of level 99 jobs and not a lot of gear for a lot of it. So I'm thinking... I'll figure it out. What I want to do is go to Sea Serpent Grotto, hit the uh, Kraken Notorious Monster that drops there, and uh, get the 119 version of the Joy Toy. Not for Cyndaquil. Well, I, I kind of want to use it for Cyndaquil, but it would be good to use it for Dent if he's on Red Mage or some other jump like that. It's because sometimes, occasionally attacks two, three times. Your friend Samuel L. Jackson just started watching. Samuel! They turned the servers off. I can't keep playing. <laughs> Well, let's have to come back so much. Actually, I think I'm just going to boot up the Xbox One and play some Final Fantasy XV before it's bedtime. It's a good sword. Yeah. It looks fun. We should be able to dual wield it with uh, Excalibur in one hand, Joy Toy in the other. It's like, Paladin without their shield is not a good Paladin. And I'm like, yeah, but bring it. <laughs> fun times. Y'all be good. Stay safe. Have fun. It's Monday. Don't get caught. Got Tuesday to worry about. I'll catch you next time. Bye.